Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. And so in this video, we'll be taking a look at what is happening across the tropics right now. And uh, we have one disturbance that is noted out there in the Atlantic. And so before I go into details, Okay, so let's go ahead and start out with current satellite view of the Atlantic Basin. And we're seeing here that we have some spots of showers and thunderstorms noted across sections of the eastern Gulf of Mexico, also in the main development region and just off the coast of Africa. And so up to the north, there we have the remnants of Earl as well as the remnants of Danielle. Uh, quite a bit of shower and thunderstorm activity noted within that area where we have the remnants of Danielle. So that might bring some increased precipitation to portions of Western Europe as we progress into this week. And so let's go ahead and talk about what is going on off the coast of Africa. So this area is given a 30% chance for possible development during the next five days. So a tropical wave should be emerging off Africa soon. And once we have that wave emerging, then it is likely that we might see some development of it as it makes its way towards the west or eventually west-northwest. There are doubts about this thing here developing due to the unfavorable conditions that are out there across the tropics. And so we're going to be taking a look at what the models are expecting starting off with euro and so this is a humidity map so the browns indicate more dry air meanwhile the teals indicate more uh, moisture and so more moisture is associated with tropical cyclone development and so this is today of course the 11th of september and here we are seeing that we have that tropical wave the 1011 millibar low pressure system uh that's actually a tropical wave that is making its way towards the west and we also have a lot of moisture behind it uh due to all that shower and thunderstorm activity taking place within that region and so as we progress into thursday of this week on september September 15th, Euro is expecting that the tropical wave will be maybe approaching uh, sections of the Eastern Caribbean. Meanwhile, the one behind it that would have emerged is not really looking so good. We see a lot of dry air infiltration. And as we progress into Saturday, the 17th of September, we are seeing that Euro is showing that the first tropical wave is going to be making its way towards the Lesser Antilles. So we see more moisture within that area. Meanwhile, that second one is not really developing up to that point. However, as we progress to Sunday, the 18th of September is going to be moving northward, maybe into more favorable conditions. So that is what the Euro model is expecting. And so now let's go ahead and move on to GFS. So this is Friday of this week, September 16th, and, and GFS does show that we're going to be having that wave uh, approaching the Lesser Antilles. So similar story to what the Euro is expecting, and it is also showing quite a bit of moisture across portions of the Caribbean. And so as we head to Saturday the 17th, a day later, we're seeing here that uh, we have all of this moisture across the Caribbean. So GFS expecting a lot more moisture than Euro at that time. And eventually the model does show something pop up in the Caribbean by Tuesday, September 20th, we see a 1007 millibar low pressure area developing there uh, just to the southwest of Jamaica. So there's no guarantee that this is going to be happening, guys. Of course, this is a very long term prediction and long term predictions are usually not uh, accurate. So we have to take this maybe with a grain of salt. But I mean, uh, as we progress into the rest of this month and into next month, we should be looking for systems popping up in the Caribbean because uh, during the month of October, let's look at this map here during the month of October uh, I know that we're still in September but for next month storms usually pop up from the South Caribbean uh, in the vicinity of Central America and usually might make their way up to the north so we definitely have to be on the lookout for those systems at that time but as of right now there are no disturbances within that area and that tropical wave that is to emerge off Africa is given a 30% chance of development and the other tropical wave ahead of it is not actually marked. It was marked earlier this week. However, uh, it wasn't likely that we would see development of it. But regardless, uh, if we have all this shower and thunderstorm activity being associated with it and it is going to be approaching the, uh, the Lesser Antilles, then it is likely to bring increased precipitation at the time. But of course, it has some unfavorable conditions to fight through. And as I speak about that, let's go ahead and look at that dry air map. 
Okay, so here we have this map showing the Saharan dust. So we have those oranges and reds that indicate Saharan dust in more abundance out there. And so there we have the moisture associated with that current tropical wave out there. So it has quite a bit of dry air ahead of it. And then uh, once that other wave is going to be emerging off Africa, I mean, this wave might pave the way might increase the moisture in the environment for that one but it might not be enough to enable it to actually fight through all the dry air and get itself together so we really have to wait and see what is going to be happening with it and so looking at this map here of the season uh the summary of the tracks this hurricane season if you were looking at this and you had no idea uh what's going on or what was expected of this hurricane season you would think that at this point in time we are in a below average hurricane season but we are in a season that was anticipated to be uh, quite active and some sources call in for even up to 18, 20 named storms. And here we are at this point in September with only five. So things can get a bit more active as we progress into the latter part of this month, go into October and November, especially uh, in that region within the South Caribbean. We definitely have to look out for systems developing there. So let's see what the rest of this hurricane season has to offer but it seems like this year is a big break for areas that are usually impacted such as the gulf coast and even sections of the caribbean so uh let's see as i said let's see what the rest of this hurricane season has to offer but things are not looking as how they were initially anticipated which isn't a bad thing it's actually good looking at this map right here uh this is a sea surface temperature anomaly map and where we have that blue area of the coast of south america extending into the pacific is where we have the enso region and the blue indicates that temperatures are below normal red indicates that we have temperatures above normal and white means things are average so within that region there we have a uh, we currently have a la nina and la nina usually brings more conducive conditions in the atlantic basin for development because it helps to reduce the wind shear and wind shear is a huge inhibiting factor when it is uh very strong so when we have strong vertical wind shear out there it usually helps to limit intensification of anything trying to develop and so we're in a la nina once the value is below minus 0.5 and we are at minus one so this is pretty significant a moderate la nina and as we head into the rest of this hurricane season this might really be a help for tropical cyclones that might develop in the vicinity of the south caribbean again we have to wait and see what uh next month is going to be offering but that is what is on the horizon guys and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated as uh once necessary as time goes by and that is really it for this update so if you found it to be quite informative Please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question. I'll try to respond as best and as soon as I can. And of course, remember to always be with wise.